In Cummings' world, the youths that gather by the war memorial, or underneath the man on the horse, aren't wearing t-shirts with the names of bands on. They're wearing t-shirts with the names of towns on. Frank Newbold travel prints, no less. Come and spend quarter of an hour or so in Cummings World with me. You never know, you might like it. Can I stop holding my stomach in now, Harris? Uh, yeah, I'm going to zoom in on the cathedral now. Okay. Lincolnshire is England's second largest and second least known county. It undulates slightly in parts, but generally speaking, it's flat. Apart from the one great geological, archaeological, architectural, ecclesiastical explosion that is Lincoln. I hope it does for you what it does for me. St. Peter's in Rome. Pah. In 1975, I went to see a Godzilla movie with my brother and my Auntie Betty in Blackpool. The supporting feature was called The Thing With Two Heads or something, and he featured Raimi Land as a corrupt white politician. How I would have recognised such a thing at the age of seven is beyond me who had to have his head transplanted onto the body of a criminal on death row who of course turned out to be innocent. But I digress. The point of the story is that the Godzilla movie has left me with only one lasting memory. A shot of a Japanese girl exposing robotic innards. Somehow palpably tinged with sadness. And for the life of me, I cannot remember why. The building behind us operates on my consciousness in a similar way. I am drawn to it inexorably. I think of it and dream of it often. I am awestruck by its beauty. And yet also, those feelings are tinged with fear, almost akin to terror. I've thought about it and I've thought about it and I've thought about it and I don't know why, but I'm happy not knowing. must they have thought, those medieval pilgrims? I suppose they must have felt the same as I felt when I found that 1925 palpy, stricky, woven square ender in that vintage shop in the Lake District. Nuts, man, nuts. When Will Brangwyn in D.H. Lawrence's The Rainbow first sees the cathedral, 
He reacts thus. When he saw the cathedral in the distance, dark blue lifted watchful in the sky, his heart leapt. It was the sign in the heaven. It was the spirit hovering like a dove, like an eagle over the earth. He turned his glowing ecstatic face to her. His mouth opened with a strange ecstatic grin. I felt much like that the first time I saw Lincoln Cathedral swinging into view as we pulled into Lincoln Central. My mind crammed with new words like Southall, Fiskerton, Rolleston, Newark on Trent. I've been cramming it full of words and images ever since. Would you Adam and Eve it? Know what I mean? I am, in Philip Larkin's words, a church bibber, randy for antique. And thus, in amongst this dazzling display of beak heads, chevrons, ball flower and blank arcading, I'm dangerously near that pitch of excitement I reached in 1975 when I met Tom Baker and he asked me if I wanted a jelly baby and I ran down three flights of stairs crying. It doesn't matter if you arrive here on a wind-blasted December evening, the dark hulk looming behind you, unlit in the shadows, or in the full glory a spurred song of spring. It still feels like the fulcrum of my being, and I am drawn inexorably toward it. They seem very keen at the moment on inventing ways of predicting how long you have yet to live. I don't know how long I have left to live, but I could easily find out how many places I have yet to visit. They're all present in the work of Frank Newbold, who worked for LNER in the 1930s and the 40s. All the posters, Lincoln included, depict places in Cummings World. I got a little shock the other night when I saw one of Scarborough Bay, a speedboat heading out, almost identical to a photo of me in 1993. Silly serendipity, perhaps. But it feels like all I would have to do was look at those few remaining prints to find out my final destination. While we're on the subject, have you ever read W.S. by L.P. Hartley? It's a short story about a writer who receives menacing postcards from locations in England, Lincoln Cathedral amongst them, each one getting inexorably nearer. If you haven't read it, you really should. I think you've watched too much 70s children's TV drama. Yeah, I think you might be right. I didn't say don't try it though. You're right, it's 1972. It's just your clouds, Dan.
Lincoln is of course 117.8 miles from Stourbridge, but it feels further, much, much further. It feels farther than the farthest flung corners of the globe. It feels so far I ought to be wearing a space suit, let alone a crimply or corduroy suit. The fabric of my clothes feels pervious to the atmosphere. The wolds beyond seem like a dissolving backdrop. If there were ever anywhere where I had the sense that the world is like an apple spinning silently in space, it's here at the top of Castle Hill in Lincoln. You can feel the echoes fanning out like ripples in a pond to Coutance, Dinan, Coimbra and San Gimignano. My son used to think that his middle name was Lord and that his full name was George Henry Lord Cummings as opposed to George Henry Lloyd Cummings. I wonder if Alfred Lord Tennyson used to think that Lord was his middle name. I doubt it, but it's a heck of a statue and a heck of a setting. closed today but in that building there there's usually a lampshade and inside the lampshade there's a little plastic flower inside a kind of little perspex case. Weird huh? I always feel that if I can find the switch then I can make the lamp post and the railings and the cobbles dance and twitch like one of those model animals with elasticated joints. Know what I mean? I saw a big pool of blood once on the floor underneath that arch there. I always see it on subsequent visits flashing in front of my retina like the red flash of the gunshot at the end of Hitchcock Spellbound. a floating tea room as opposed to the spy who loved me revolving chiropractor or octopusy gesticulating chip shop Frank Newbolt knew the answer to that I'd love to be a girl, or just somebody else entirely, inhabiting another consciousness just for a moment and see what it's like. Not to have been born in Stourbridge in 1968 and lived in my particular slice of time and space. Lincoln Cathedral gets me as close as anything can 
to that sensation, seeing Englishness through the eyes of the un-English. What was the second ever seven inch single you bought, Harris? Um, no one ever asks that, do they? I'm asking it now. Uh, I think it was Prince Charming, Adam and the Ant. Mm. Mine was Vienna by Ultravox, and I seem to remember the front cover. It looked a bit like that. <laughs> this means nothing to me. In my roughest, darkest hours, when my sleeve of care is at its most ravelled, transport me here in an instant into a pool of light and quiet in uphill Lincoln. Do you know what? I'd love to rouse my sleeping childhood self from my frowsy sleep beneath the winciette blankets and bry nylon sheets of my 70s bedroom and take me, Christmas Carol style, to uphill Lincoln and show him my later life. Maybe there's an older version of me now who wants to take this version of me on a similar spectral holiday. I'm looking forward to it. It even looks like a travel poster, doesn't it? Is God in the details or in the bold and linear simplifications? Is there anything that I can say to enrich this overall experience? Just this once, just this once, I don't think there is. Do you remember those films you saw at night as a child? I don't know, the 39 steps or whatever your equivalent of it was, in which the hero is hoisted from the mundane, humdrum reality of his everyday life and hurled headlong into a world of romance and adventure and intrigue and far off places and you longed for adulthood. All the best places make me feel like that. <laughs> 